Hello and welcome to Tribe Topper. In this video session, you are going to learn about critical angle and total internal reflection. Let's try to understand what do we mean by critical angle. So as you can see in this diagram, so we know that when a ray travels from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, it refracts and it bends away or towards the normal depending on the densities of the two media. Now here we can see that a ray is traveling from water to air. So that means water is a denser medium as we know and air is the lightest medium. So the air, uh, the ray, the moment it enters the air, it will speed up and so it will bend away from the normal. And as you can see here, we have theta 1, that is the angle of incidence and it, that's the first medium. And the moment it enters this, touches the surface, it is going to refract, it will bend away from the normal. So this is your angle of refraction, theta 2. So what happens if I go on increasing the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction will also go on increasing and changing. So if I say the ray is incident here, it might bend towards this side. So now if I go on increasing the angle of incidence, a stage comes when this angle of incidence, like the ray is going from here, from water, the moment it enters the lighter medium, the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees. As you can see here, the ray bends as at 90 degrees with the normal. So you can just see this is the angle of incident, uh, angle of refraction it is going to make. So the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees. So at this point of time, whatever is your angle of incidence, it is called the critical angle. So how will we define the critical angle? The angle of incidence in the denser medium corresponding to which the angle of refraction in the lighter medium is equal to 90 degrees. So there are two things to be noted here. One, the ray should be traveling from the denser to the rarer medium. So as I said, the angle of incidence in the denser medium corresponding to which the angle of refraction in the lighter medium is 90 degrees. So that angle is known as critical angle. So we can denote as IC or theta C. This denotes your critical angle. And the next thing that we are going to talk about total internal reflection, it is something which is based on the critical angle. So as I just said that when the ray falls at an angle of equal to the critical angle, then the angle of refraction is going to be 90 degrees. Now what if I still increase my critic, uh, angle of incidence beyond critical angle? That means if I make my angle of incidence even greater than the critical angle. So where is the ray going to go? It was already 90 degrees. It's not going to go anywhere outside back. The ray will simply get reflected back into the same medium. So this is known as total internal reflection. So let's define it that when the angle of incidence is larger than the critical angle, the light wave does not move into the new medium at all and it simply gets reflected back into the original medium. This process is called total internal reflection or you can simply say the phenomenon of a ray reflecting completely back into the denser medium when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle is called total internal reflection. So the two things that you need to understand here, there are two important conditions for total internal reflection to happen. So number one, TIR means total internal reflection. So number one, the first condition is that the first medium has to be a denser medium and the second medium has to be a lighter medium. So the ray should be traveling from the light denser to the lighter medium. That's why I've written refractive index of the first is greater than refractive index of the second. And secondly, the angle of incidence has to be greater than the critical angle. So only if these two conditions are satisfied, the total internal reflection happens. So let's see 
how can we find out the critical angle if we know the refractive index of the denser medium now as you can see here theta 1 is going to be theta c is the critical angle and 90 degrees is the angle of refraction then first medium is having a refractive index of n1 now the rays traveling from denser to right uh, rarer medium or a lighter medium so sine according to the snell's law sine of angle of incidence theta i over sine of angle of refraction theta r is equal to n2 because it is going from the medium 1 to medium 2 so you're going to get the refractive index of second medium so if i want the refractive index of the first medium i will simply make it reciprocal because we know that n1 is going to be 1 over n2 therefore that means n1 is going to be sine of theta r over sine of theta i so if we want the refractive index of the first medium we'll simply take the reciprocal of that relation so it becomes sine theta r by sine theta i if my angle of incidence is exactly the critical angle theta c then corresponding to that the angle of refraction is going to be 90 degrees so the relation becomes n1 is equal to sine 90 upon sine of theta c so i'll just do the cross multiplication take this up and bring this down so i get sine of theta c is equal to sine 90 is 1 so 1 upon n1 that helps me to find out the critical angle so if i know the refractive index of the first medium i can know i can find out the critical angle and if i know the critical angle i can find out the refractive index of that denser medium so that's all for this video session in the next video session you are going to learn about diffraction thank you